Hey everyone, Justin Byers, JB Byers Woodworking, back in the shop, and today we're doing some engraving. Um, this is my process. I use, you know, carbon paper to transfer the image to the board um, work surface that I'm going to be engraving. And I used to uh, draw everything out. I've been drawing, um, you know, since I could hold a pencil, and I found that it was quicker if I got got it printed off and then it was a lot neater and cleaner as well so i would uh, print everything off or have it printed off for me and then i transfer the image to the piece of wood that i'd be engraving um, this is the plaque that i'm doing right now on for the tool cabinet the martin in remembrance of my dad that was what i decided to name my tool cabinet and the other piece was a bench that I'm working on. Um, I know that a lot of people seem intimidated sometimes about doing hand engraving, um, but it, it's not as bad as you think. It, um, it it's, it's similar to coloring. You just, just stay in the lines. Um, here's the plaque that I'm doing for the uh, tool cabinet, and this is the router that I use, a skill router. This router is just is really nice. I like this router. It has you know a lot of features, and actually this green light here on the side will light up red if you're pushing it too hard, and if you don't let off, it will actually shut the motor down. Um, and I like because it'll keep you from burning your motor up. And this has several different settings. Um, you can you can adjust your bits and size and shank size and Hardwood, plastic, softwood, your RPMs. It's, it's a really good router for the price. I believe it's uh, $150 or $60 at Lowe's. Comes with a fixed base as well as a plunge base. And it also has three LED lights, which is really nice to, to light up your surface that you're working on and help you see exactly what you're doing. I have nothing bad to say about this router. I'm actually planning on purchasing uh, two more. That'll put me at four of them, so that'll tell you how much I like this router. And here I'm engraving, uh, or setting up to engrave. Uh, go down to the work surface, set my depth, and I will go off to the side and plunge it down and set it in, and then I will plunge into my piece to engrave. And like I said, it's um, I'm using this large router because I found that larger routers are better than the small ones. I've used small ones, tried it with a small one before, and it'll kind of, uh, you know, if it catches the grain just right, and it'll kind of want to kick. But with this larger router, it, it seems to stay planted to the uh, work surface a lot better. And if you notice, I hold it at the base of it. That way I can push in and, and get a little more stable with it versus holding it by the handles. Um, I know you've seen plates that, that you can mount, and this just took me about, I think, 15 minutes to uh, to route out and get all that. And this one, here's the bit that I reordered. Um, I dropped my old one and <laughs> broke the tip off of it, so I went ahead and got me another bit. Um, this is a 30-degree V-bit. It's really nice for, for fine, detailed work, um, like these lines here that are really small uh, you can see exactly how tedious this piece is this piece actually i think ended up taking me about an hour and a half maybe two hours um, or so and i you know took a few breaks in between just stand up and stretch my legs and stuff but uh, here i am engraving the plaque and basically on my engraving stuff what i do is go around the outside line um, and get everything you know trimmed out with my router and then I'll come back in and hog out the meat um, with a different bit which is one of the reasons that I want to get another router um, that way I can leave two of them set up with my main bits that I use specifically for my engraving I don't have to keep switching back and forth I can have both of them set up and I can just grab one and do what I need to do and go back to the other one. If I really recommend, if this is something you think you might 
be interested in. I, I highly recommend doing it. It's just get a scrap piece of wood, just doodle. You know, I, I actually just took a pencil and, and wrote my name down on a piece of wood. And then I used a, a router and a quarter or eighth inch uh, router bit. I purchased a small router bit and I just went to town. Just uh, just experimenting, doing straight lines and curves and cursive. And it's once you kind of get a feel of how the, the router is moving in different directions with the wood grain, you kind of start to get a feel for it over time. And you can really you know tune your engraving uh to be able to do things like this it's it's not cnc you know accurate but it's it's not bad i don't think for for doing it by hand i know you see a lot of people do uh do things with dremels i've tried dremels and you know even the attachments it's kind of like a pen and to me it was uh well, here's the bench that i finished um but to me the router was just a a better machine process for me um it just felt more comfortable and here i have the plaque laid out i've got some of this uh quilted maple that i'm going to use to to trim this in and i've planed down a piece of pine for to make up the difference um in the thickness uh joseph a buddy of mine sent me this bird's eye maple and it is just gorgeous stuff. Uh, he's actually working on a tool cabinet as well. Um, and his is, his, you know, face covers are bird's eye maple and just beautiful bird's eye maple. And here I am sanding um, while I've went in and painted the, the lettering and sanding all that off and getting it cleaned up. And here it is after painting and stuff and here i am gluing up the plaque uh you know the frame and stuff for the piece to sit into and i don't know if this is a, a trick or a hack i'm sure people's done it before i'll actually take wood glue put it down and then i'll go and put some loctite super glue in places um and it kind of you know within a minute or so it gives it a really good bond and it'll hold it securely enough to where you don't have to clamp it. And it gives the wood glue time to, to cure fully as well. If you're in a hurry, which I normally am. Um, but I've, that's my little trick that I do when I'm gluing things up. And I've got uh, the Minwax um, natural finish that I'm going to use on this as well. And uh, here I have it in place and together and it's not it's, there's some small flaws in it it's not extremely tight as i wanted it to be but uh but i'm happy with it um with how it turned out and stuff and i have my here i have my chisel rack up i didn't want to mount it flush with the top of the tool cabinet i wanted to you know just be proud of the bottom a little bit and i just have the chisel rack up so that way when i lift it up it doesn't hit it and I can get it positioned in the uh, place that I want. And I'm using some little one-inch uh, 90-degree L brackets to to mount this to. With the, that way, I don't have any screws or anything going through it, and it still, you know, it stays nice and clean and neat, and uh, and really, you know, turns out that uh, once I get this on, I'm really happy with how it came together. And I, I believe here I switched. Uh, I went and got some smaller 5 8 screws instead of the three quarter. I didn't want to take a chance of the head going through the, the front of it. So I just got some smaller screws to put in place of those three quarter inch screws. And if you haven't yet, uh, if I've earned your go ahead with the subscribe button, if you would hit that and the notification bell. And stick around and see what else I do in the shop. Uh, I have a few things coming up. Hopefully I can get to. I've got a few orders I have to work on. And here's that uh, natural stain by Minwax that I'm using. Uh, and I do not. It was just. It happened to be there. I used a sponge brush. I really do not like sponge brushes. 
but it was just right there. I just grabbed it to apply finish on the small piece, but uh, I'm not a big fan of using sponge brushes. But when I do use them, I actually save the handles, and I'll use those dowels um, to fill in and plug holes and knots and things like that. And here I have the ladder out so that I can get this positioned in the proper spot. And I don't know if you can, I guess you can see there where it's just uh, maybe an inch or so below the, the lip. I, I started to mount it on top and I started to mount it flush. And I just thought that it looked better having a little bit of, uh, of, of overhang below the top lip of the cabinet. I just thought it looked a little nicer that way. Gave it a little more dimension to it, I believe, uh, is the word I'm looking for. And I'm and in all, I'm I'm really happy with uh, with how this turned out. And like I said, if you're if you're interested in in doing any engraving, I really you know recommend just just going for it. Just try it and uh, and see how how you like it and how you do with it. Um, you know, I experiment with stuff. That I've never done before and you don't never know unless you try and uh, I'm just I really enjoy doing hand engraving it's it's fun it's soothing um, if you enjoy scroll saw work you'll you'll like this as well and here I have it uh, mounted into place and it, it looks good I'm, I'm I'm happy with how it turned out and like I said this is the Martin um, in remembrance and in honor of my dad. You now we lost him February of 2022, which was kind of rough on all of us. Dad was, uh, he was a one of a kind man. So I appreciate everyone sticking around and keep making, stay productive, and have a great week.